Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast, members of the Off the Ball Network. And in today's episode, we're going to be discussing game six of the NBA Finals between the Boston Celtics and the Golden State Warriors. But before we get started with today's episode, if you guys are new to our YouTube channel or listening on any other podcast streaming platform, be sure to make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and turn on post notifications to our YouTube page. And also make sure to download each and every single episode. Give us a nice little rating and a five-star review as well. But without further ado, let's get started with today's episode because obviously, like we mentioned, the Golden State Warriors are now the 2022 NBA champions. Stephen Curry had a phenomenal series, followed by, you know, Klay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, Draymond Green coming up big in very key moments. And, you know, the Boston Celtics not taking advantage of, you know, some of the advantages that they had all throughout this series, right? And I want to start off talking about Boston to begin this episode because there's a number of things that I want to highlight going forward for them. First and foremost, I want to congratulate the Celtics for making it all the way up until this point. You know, for the entirety of the year, we a lot of us thought that, you know, teams like Milwaukee had a good chance of, you know, coming out of the Eastern Conference, the Miami Heat possibly. You know, once James Harden got shipped to Philadelphia, a lot of people were stating that possibly the Sixers had a really good shot of, you know, surpassing outside of the Eastern Conference. But all in all, you know, with the help of Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and the rest of the supporting cast, also with a great coaching staff led by Ime Doku, Boston was able to, you know, finally make it to the NBA Finals for the first time since 2010. And ironically, you know, understandably, going up against a very great p- opponent, we all understood this was going to be a dogfight for both units, right? You know, Boston had the advantage when it comes to, you know, just sheer intangibles and talent overall, right? You're talking about a Golden State team that, you know, kind of hobbled throughout this series. You know, Gary Payton the second came back from injury a little bit late and things of that nature. And we're talking about, you know, Clay Thompson, who's roughly been fairly inconsistent for the entire postseason but he came up very big in key moments for golden state not only throughout this entire postseason but specifically in the last couple of games of this series right and then we have to you know give andrew wiggins his props he's been phenomenal for them all year right you know becoming an all-star starter for the first time in his career buying into his role here in golden state that way he doesn't stick out like a sore thumb but as far as you know the the overall game breakdown despite the talent deficit between golden state and boston i will say golden state they had the more depth in the series right you know they they were the much deeper team you could tell steve Kerr, and he's got a ton of options right you know you can go to jordan Poole when clay thompson isn't you know looking his best draymond green benched in key moments during this series for Kevon Looney. Hell, Otto Porter Jr. even subbed in for Looney at times in the starting lineup, and we saw it again tonight. Despite, you know, those lineups not having much success, at least to start games, you know, they still were able to kind of surpass all of those negatives and be able to, you know, win this series and now become NBA champions for the fourth time in the Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green era. But when you're looking at the Boston Celtics, you know, they don't have depth in their favor, right? You know, Derek White, Al Horford, Peyton Pritchard, these bench guys, you know, they didn't really show up for them in the second half of this series, right? I've been seeing a lot of people critique Udoka's minutes distribution throughout this entire series, but, you know, he was really at a disadvantage with that because, you know, outside of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and maybe the uh, occasional Marcus Smart, you know, he didn't really exactly know where his production was coming from on a night to night basis. Right. And I think that's where, you know, Golden State had the advantage point in this series, because, you know, although Boston is a team that, you know, is very reluctant on their defense and things of that nature. Right. You know, defensively, they don't have the luxury of being able to, you know, pull multiple guys off of their bench. Therefore, your legs tend to get, you know, a little bit more tired, especially when you're having to work twice as hard and making things very hard for yourself on the offensive side of the basketball with the poor execution in the half court setting and things of that nature. And, you know, Golden State, give them credit. You know, they made the proper adjustments defensively throughout this entire series that, you know, was necessary for them to come up big. And all in all, you know, it tend to work in their favor. Now, when we look at Boston in the half court, there's a very glaring issue and it's the lack of an orchestrator within their offense, right? And Jason Tatum, he's gonna get a lot of flack for, you know, such a poor series in terms of his own individual standards, but, You know, I think to a certain degree, I will give Tatum some slack just because despite him being able to showcase the ability to, to, you know, make the proper reads at times and in certain moments, 
you know, he's always going to have that natural tendency as, of a score, right? You know, this is a guy that tends to, you know, play a lot of isolation basketball. And although, you know, he has a very tough shot selection, you know, there's a lot of other parts within his game that, you know, are very beneficial for the Boston Celtics. And unfortunately, you know, I think the biggest reason why we saw Tatum have a lot of ups and downs was not only due to the fact that he had a fairly inconsistent approach throughout this entire series, trying to balance his playmaking and scoring the basketball, but he just was playing outside of his natural role, right? You know, this is a guy that, you know, tends to like to score the basketball at a 26, 27 point per game rate. Right. And, you know, with him having to take on the load of a playmaker this series and, you know, for the majority of this year, he's had some growing pains. But we've kind of seen him grow that aspect of his game right before our eyes. Right. And luckily, you know, he has a secondary option in Jalen Brown who can, you know, take off some of the pressure for him when it comes to, you know, just scoring the basketball at an efficient rate, giving him another option in a half court setting. But, you know, outside of that, you know, there really wasn't much consistency from any of the role players if we're talking about the Boston Celtics, right? You know, Al Horford and Derek White, they were phenomenal in the first three games of this series, you know, really good in the first half of these series. But for whatever reason, you know, these guys just weren't able to get things going for the second half of this series. You know, uh, Derek White, he, he was absent since game three. Al Horford, although he had a pretty night tonight, you know, knocking down a bunch of three pointers, he really did a great job in terms of igniting Boston half court offense in the third quarter. You know, it still wasn't enough, right? And I mentioned it in the last episode, you know, Boston is a team that has championship level talent, but you know, they have the habits of a lottery level team, right? And I think, you know, with that stuff being said, those bad tendencies came back to bite them in a lot of moments in this series, right? You know, them not being able to close out quarters well. You know, we saw that throughout the entire postseason when we were watching them play against, you know, the Miami Heat, sometimes the Milwaukee Bucks, and a lot in this series. And those bad habits just led to a lot of negative things for Boston and it just continued to stack up and stack up to the point where they weren't able to really recover from that. You know, you, you were seeing a lot of abnormal shots in the half court from Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, really indecisive, passing when he needs to shoot the ball, shooting when he needs to pass the ball. And I think all in all, they needed to feel this pain. You know, I think Boston has a really good shot of getting back to, you know, this place. And it, it's gonna be a tough task whatsoever, right? You're gonna have to go through the Milwaukee Bucks of the world, you know, the Miami Heat, we're gonna look to, you know, try to make the proper additions to, you know, move forward here on out. Who knows what the Brooklyn Nets look like? So Austin, they're gonna be battle tested for the entirety of, you know, the next couple of years with the, in this Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown era. It's definitely not gonna be a cakewalk to get back here, but I think that, you know, this was a growing pain that they needed. You know, they were able to, you know, finally get over the hump of surpassing the Eastern Conference Finals for the first time. And, you know, with that being said, this is a team that with Brad Stevens in the front office, making the adequate moves that, you know, turn this team from an 11 seed to a top two seed in the Eastern Conference that we all know was very battle tested and deep. I think that, you know, we can hang our hat on Boston being in the Eastern Conference Finals for the next couple of years and potentially, you know, making it back to the NBA Finals. But let me talk about the Golden State Warriors, give them their credit because, you know, Stephen Curry, he's been phenomenal throughout this series, right? But I want to talk about, you know, the role players throughout this series, right? Because we saw Draymond Green struggle for the better half of this series, you know, with Boston sitting in drop coverage, taking away his ability to really do anything out of the short row. He had no options. And, you know, given he isn't a guy that had a very decorated individual individual skill set offensively not the best jump shooter in the world isn't really a catch and shoot guy doesn't have the ability to really punish teams consistently in terms of you know mismatches on the lower block or even shooting the smaller defenders on floater opportunities penetrating down throughout the lane and things of that nature you know despite all of that he was still able to stick to his true roots be a great defensive player throughout this entire series and all in all once he got bypassed all the antics and things that he was trying to do because i feel like over the course of this series he was getting too caught up in the antics of basketball rather than playing the actual game of basketball and then once we started to see him block in he started to you know perform better and better as the series continued to weigh on and you know as you saw by the stat line tonight you know he had, he finished the night with 12 points you know this is a guy that was religiously an eight point per game scorer throughout this entire postseason so to see him knocking down jump shots punishing boston in a lot of instances in the mid-range and things of that nature it was really good to see and we have to acknowledge what andrew wiggins was able to do throughout this entire series just being able to really attack immediately off the catch in a lot of instances you know he was phenomenal in the half court and in transition and defensively you know although jason tatum tends to have a very low shot quality percentage you know wiggins was able to take advantage of all of that and you know he made tatum look like a shadow of himself throughout this entire nba finals run you know and you know wiggins he's been a guy that you know has also gone through some really tough pastures 
dealing with, you know, the, a lot of criticism, the multiple changes of the head coach from Minnesota. And then, you know, finally coming to an environment where, you know, he was held accountable and finally able to really take advantage of, you know, his God given ability and his sheer intangibles and things of that nature. And Andrew Wiggins, you know, he's finally an NBA champion. This is a guy that, you know, traded away from the Cleveland Cavaliers organization, a team that, you know, at the time was seeking an NBA championship. And for to see him, you know, kind of bounce back through all those hardships, we got to give, you know, a, a big hand to Andrew Wiggins for all of that. And finally, I want to talk about Klay Thompson because, you know, the road back to the NBA finals for him was you know a very tough one missed two seasons back to back dealing with multiple injuries and you know even once he got back on the floor you know there was definitely signs of regression right he lost a step and everything you know the athleticism wasn't there no longer an all nba level defender despite you know him still being able to be a plus on that end of the basketball but you know clay thompson he was just phenomenal over the last couple of games you know a key moment in the series for me that I thought was going to really, you know, help swing things over for Golden State was how are the Warriors going to look in the half court during the non Curry minutes? And, you know, guys like Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins and Klay Thompson, especially were able to, you know, keep Golden State's head above water and put them in positions, you know, stay within these games and be able to, you know, have a legitimate shot of not only coming back from down two one, but being able to, you know, have a legitimate shot of winning the NBA finals. And they were finally able to accomplish that. So once again, I want to congratulate the Golden State Warriors. They had a really great season through all the ups and downs over the last couple of years you know they finally have reached the mountaintop of the nba once again and from here on out you know golden state is definitely going to be that team that is ranked towards the top of the nba when it comes to you know preseason predictions and things of that nature but thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode with me here on the ball fake podcast this wraps up season two of the ball fake podcast you know we've been moving and growing fairly quickly here and you know i really enjoy doing this podcast and you know just being able to give my point of view on you know the game of basketball and things of that nature right but thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode with me here on the ball fake podcast if you're new to our youtube channel or listening on our apple podcast or spotify or any other podcast streaming platform make sure to like comment and subscribe turn on post notifications give us a nice review and make sure to just share all of our episodes and follow us on all social media platforms but besides that it's your boy nicey chunga you're listening to the ball fake podcast and we out praise god